Welcome to episode 55 of First Frames First. My name is Adrain Constatin. Jesus. My name is Jesus Green. <laughs> Jesus Green? Wow. <laughs> He's trying to light his cigar over there. Coming off second best. Your cigars are beating you tonight. Everything is beating me today. Yeah. Today it's is fine. Jason's uh, getting kicked in the gonads day. It's okay. Yeah. Um, welcome to the show, everyone. Today we're smoking cigars in the garage. Uh, that's why we're uh, we're slumming it. Oh, let's. Can you actually go unplug that thing and we let's let's unplug that thing and let's start again. Okay. Because I'm not gonna light this like a champion. Who are we? Nobody's. Speak for yourself. Okay. We're Canadian filmmakers with the dream of surviving financially on the backs of our films. Welcome to our show where we bring people along on our film journey. Maybe, maybe we can learn a thing or two. Maybe we can teach people a thing or two while drinking beers. I mean, if you can't drink beers while filmmaking, what's the point? We are Fable Forest Films, failing our way to success. Welcome to Jurassic Park. I mean, our show. First frames first. So delightful in front of the heater. That's nice. Okay, we'll just keep rolling if the camera stays rolling. All right. Welcome to episode fifty five of First Frames First. My name is Adrain Constatin. I I'm Jesus Green. I always thought you were Jesus. Jesus Thomas Green. <laughs> if you grew a beard. I grew a, I grew a beard. Yes. And uh, now that I've shaved the beard, mm -hmm. I don't think that my wife would be happy if I started to grow it back. Totally. My whole family also looks at me much more pleasantly when I do not have facial hair. <laughs> yeah. That's... Uh, I don't know what it is. Yeah. You know, some ladies like the beards. Most ladies. None that I know. I, yeah, most ladies I feel like don't really like the beard. But the thing is that it's like a male lion thing. It's like a manliness thing. Mm -hmm. It's like a grrr, mountain man. Like our friend, our friend Tabby, tree. the, uh, the uh, makeup. That's right. Special makeup effects. Artist, makeup. Special effects. She likes beards. Her husband has a humongous beard. But he himself is humongous. Oh, I mean, do you know what? He's uh, got red hair, and we were shooting in Tabby's house, and our sh and our sh the shoot went long, very long, uh, very we discussed very this. long, and um, and I just had visions because he was trying to sleep in the house while we were shooting. Yeah, and I just had, and he's like what six foot three, something like that. He's a big dude. He's a big guy, and I just had visions of this red-headed, bearded, six-foot-three man bursting out of their bedroom door with an axe and slaying me to death on the kitchen floor for making so much noise. You know what I say to that? So long as the cameras are rolling. <laughs> <laughs> so long as we catch it on yeah. camera, we're good. Yeah. Put that on YouTube. How is it going? Yeah. It's yeah. it's going. Yeah. Yeah. So I will I will just share with our with our you know, so I'm heading to a funeral. My grandfather passed away. So ready here. Yeah. Thanks, man. Now, look, and I know a lot of people are like, they're old. You know what I mean? But. How old was your grandpa? 100. 100? <laughs> yeah. He just cracked 100 in February. That's amazing. Yeah. Was. Um, but, but I will, I will just yeah. say this about, about old people. Like. You look at them and you're like, this person's never going to die. Like at 97, I was like, he's never going to die. He's right. good. He's going to be amazing. He's going to be great. He's going to keep on going forever. Mm -hmm. And then and then it just, I don't know, just like... Did, uh, took a turn or did he die skydiving or... Took a turn. I, <laughs> not skydiving. But, Listen, uh, just because his grandpa's dead <laughs> doesn't mean that I'm not going to be a dickhead on this podcast, I guess. Totally. <laughs> But no, just uh, just took a bit of a turn and then just got sickly. And then once he started getting a bit sick, he was like, I am out. Yeah. Like they, they did, they, they were like, look, we can give you a blood transfusion and you could, you could last another couple of weeks. 
He was like, no. Oh, so he was lucid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he was with it, for sure. And yes, and uh, there are sometimes people who get to that age who are not really with it. And uh, no, he was together. He was with it. And I actually spoke to, spoke to him. You did. Three weeks ago on the phone, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is very hectic. Yeah, yeah. But now, I would like to say that he is like a... He was w- one of the last surviving World War II bomber pilots. No way. Dude, my, that... gran- my grandfather is like a superhero. You know what I mean? I was saying to Adrian, <laughs> I was like... When you told me the news the other day, I was like, I would like to just, I, you know what, you, you don't know what to say. Yeah. But I was like, tell me some stories about this guy, mm-hmm. right? Because the thing is, is, you know, talk about him, tell, tell fun stories that you like. Totally. Right? And, uh, and do it on the podcast so, you know, our, our listeners can cry and, uh, you know, also hear stories about your grandpa. Well, I, I, I'd just like to say like... <clears throat> And I will, and, and yes, this is a great idea. Um, and so, I feel like they're the last generation of superheroes. I, I'm not really sure. Like, a lot of people that are in the military today might get really upset at me saying that. Mm. But the the people who fought in World War II, yeah. I'm not really sure because you were, you were signing up to go and probably die. Well, but you were fighting what you believed was a true evil. I don't think that I don't think that um military uh enlisted men and women today would disagree with you. Like, like I don't I don't feel I like think people that join they, the military today that, and they're like I'm probably going to die. Totally. Totally. I think they're like this uh, is a great career decision. A great decision. career I get my school paid for. Now, I think that a lot of people now I will say that um probably right after 9/11 Mm-hmm. there was a lot of um, patriotism to be yeah. like, I'm going to join and go because and we haven't had an enemy in a long time. Yeah. Right. Um, but suddenly we had an enemy that we mm-hmm. decided upon. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I think that uh, I don't, but I don't think I, I disagree with you. I think that um, if you asked, if you polled mm-hmm. men and women in the military, they would agree. They would say that world war two veterans were the real deal, you know? Yeah. And like, not to say that people that are in the military right now don't do incredibly hero- heroic thing, and they do lose limbs and they do get killed. Totally. Um, they just—I suppose it's a generational thing. Like, it's more like that. That entire generation had to rise up and. And I think go to I think today, and again, I'm speaking out my ass because what do I know? But uh, I think today, a lot of people that who enlist are more like, I'm going to protect Mm -hmm. right i'm gonna go over and i'm gonna keep the peace i'm Mm -hmm. gonna make sure that these bad guys don't get to these good people etc but in world war ii it was like we need to destroy a whole army like Mm -hmm. they were up against an army that's who knows how big you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of scale yeah anyway so i will say he uh, bomber uh, pilot yeah so i will say um he was born in 1919 so that's a long time ago. And he was born in the middle of Saskatchewan to a farmer hmm. who actually moved out from Durham here in Ontario. Okay. okay. So my original, original family was from Ontario. Hmm. And um, then uh, his father got a piece of steel in his eye and it got infected and he died. Oh, man. So he was the man of the house at nine years old. And um, then uh, his mother had to get, uh, got somebody to farm the land, to help farm the land, and right. he would help farm the land. and right. Learn the business. Learn how to farm, and this guy was a tough guy. I don't think we understand in, in our, in today's context, what it, like, I think people were, like, smacked around a whole lot more than people are today. Mm-hmm. They were, like, you know, seriously disciplined. Um, and I think, it, it, like, today it would be considered abuse an abusive relationship, the way that kids were probably treated back then. Sure. Um, and then uh, then World War Two came around and he enlisted and they... Uh, was he pretty young? He was, uh, I think, I'm going to say, uh, now this, we could do the maths exactly, but I think he was one of the older guys that enlisted. I think he was like 22 and like 24 by the time he ended, but he was one of the older guys. Whew. 
crazy. Twenty two by the time he ended. Yeah. So so you're you're sixteen, seventeen, eighteen years old and they and, and yeah. you're you're like, I wanna fly planes? Not really. I don't think so. I, you you would go in for an interview. Right. And they would look at your sort of psychologically assess you and they would decide where you were gonna go. So they would be like, You're gonna be an infantryman, you're gonna be a da da da, you're gonna be a da. So and, sounds like you'd be a smart dude then. Probably, I think more to the point, he was probably calm. Very spatially aware. Yeah. Like, he probably, they probably did a bunch of tests and he was probably just chilled out. And so, bomber pilots, because the thing about bomber pilots is they give you a, they give you a, they give you a place you got to go. Right. Drop your bombs over here and fly back. And people are going to be shooting at you. Particularly if the, if the searchlights find you, right? Right. At night. Right. They're going to shoot at you. Right. And you've got to keep on going you got to just keep going straight because you got to get to the spot that you need to and when the guy next to you gets shot down you got to keep on keep on flying and then you got to dump your bombs and then you got to come back yeah and so you're in these big machines these big halifax bombers you know with a crew of people who are all doing a job yeah. all trusting you right and when you come back you find out how many people make it back you know and so he flew 39 missions oh Wow. Yeah. And um, they said, make it a, this is one of his stories. The guy, because the, they, they obviously were short of people and they were like, and he's done his, he had flown already. He was like four over what you needed to fly to get discharged. Right. And the guy was like, now nah, my grandfather was insanely lucky. That was one of the, one of the traits he had through his whole life. And um, he, the, the, whoever was in command of their, station i'm sorry i'm brutalizing what the regimental thing is sure but like was like just make it an even 4 do this one last mission right he's like no i think 39 sounds good enough right 39 sounds good to me and three uh, times the lucky 13 buddy well Whoop. um the they did not the person who took his plane did not come back in 40 so yeah so he came back to canada and he married a he, he met a lady there because he was flying a Yorkshire woman who is, not, was my, is now my grandmother and uh, brought her back and raised a family on a farm. And she was military as well? So, yes. So she was servicing the planes, driving trucks and apart, equipment and parts around there in UK. Right. And she was from the UK. Yeah. Yorkshire. Yeah. Yorkshire, yeah. Um, but some of the stuff that's crazy that, that he did mention, like he has some stories. He, got, he won the Distinguished Flying Cross for... Um, so, you're in this huge airplane with four engines. You can't really maneuver so well. Okay. So, when a, when a Spitfire, not a Spitfire, the Spitfire was the English, when a Folkwolf, what's the, do you know the German fighter planes? I think it's a Folkwolf. Anyway, when they would come and get, come to get you, right, you, you're in a bit of trouble because they can maneuver so well. I suppose World War One would be those, those biplanes, right? Yes. Those are the, like the like Red Like Snoopy Baron. one, Red Baron. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't really know much about World War II planes. Were they yeah. jets in no, World War II? they had the front propeller, the propeller right at the front. Okay. So when a German, uh, we have the Google here, we can ask. But like... Um, it's fair, we do. Yeah. Okay, Google. What is the Ger What is the name of the German fighter plane during World War II? Google is thinking. On the website militaryfactory.com, they say... The German Luftwaffe fielded two of the best fighters in all of World War II, the Messerschmitt Bf 109 and Falkwolf 190. Falkwolf? Falkwolf, yeah. yeah. So, or the Messerschmitt, which Thanks. whichever one. Thanks, Googs. So, um, so anyway, one of these guys rounded up coming up to get them, right? And he managed to maneuver this big old plane in such a way that the rear gunner could shoot down the plane. Shit. So, he won the Distinguished Flying Cross for that, that maneuver. But um, a funny story, World War II people would get together after afterwards, like even the Germans, everybody that fought would get together at like a, I don't know, and shake each other's hands. And the one time he was in the elevator with the number one German pilot, Ace, who shot down more bombers or more planes than any other person during World War II. Okay. He, he just shook his hand. <laughs> And said, oh, holy and said, fuck and said thanks for not shooting me down <laughs> oh, oh my god yeah he was funny he was a funny dude mm. always making jokes your grandpa said yeah. thanks for not shooting me thanks down thanks for not shooting me down I mean fair enough yeah that's crazy yeah did he um, yeah I mean 
you had a pretty good relationship with your grandpa. You talked yeah. to him like three weeks ago. Did yeah. did he talk about a lot about the war? Or not yes, really? totally. I actually have, I probably have about a three hour audio recording of him laying out all the stories. So all of his grandchildren yeah. and children sort of got the stories out of him over time. At one stage, I was at his house in Rosetown, Saskatchewan, and I had um, some nice audio recording equipment. So I set it up and I just like started firing questions at him. And I got, yeah. I probably got his, you know, his most popular stories that right. he usually told everyone. But he did write it down in like a small little memoir. Yeah. Uh, because he did not want to forget everything. And then my uncle and my mother sort of helped him turn that into a little self-published book, which oh. I will totally give you. Dude, that is amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. And it's just a small little thing, mm-hmm. but it just tells, it basically tells his story. And um, so just something to, something to think about, like when you're doing so many missions and you're flying so much, one of the things he would say is that you had to trust your instruments because sometimes you would feel like you were all of a sudden upside down. And you're like, I'm sure that I'm upside down right now. I'm sure that my instruments are wrong. Right. So what would happen is if somebody got confused like that in that kind of situation, if they didn't trust their implement, instruments, they would actually fly straight into the ground thinking that they Trying were... Trying to write themselves or something? Pull themselves up because they were okay. just confused. They just didn't know whether... I mean, you know, there must have been smoke and dark and fucking... Dark. Dark, yeah. Like Oh, shoot. Sorry. It's okay. Like dark you are flying in the pitch black one thing that i don't understand how it happens they would all take off and they would all be flying towards a target and you you can't see where the other planes are or how close they are to you so like you i I mean that's something you don't really ever hear do they ever clip each other well this is the thing like they would open the bomb doors and they would have to make sure when they open the bomb doors that there wasn't a or it was something you had to be Looking out really the windows ca- you for have to like be really careful that a, a, one of the bombers, a, a, if there's a bomber directly above you, they're not going to drop their payload on you. Right. Anyway. Oh, yeah, it was crazy, did, dude. Did he have? I mean, I don't really want to get into like superstition, yeah. but uh, thirty-nine missions. Yeah. Did he like have a little troll doll that he rubbed the head of, or yeah. like did he touch yeah. the plane, or they, did he? They, they did. The crew did. I think he just one of the things he said that the people who dreamt about flying. They died. It was like if somebody had a dream that they were flying, they didn't come back the next day. So he didn't, he didn't, uh, you know, he didn't have any dreams or anything like that. And um, they called him the wolf because he always kind of sat by himself. Mm-hmm. He always sat quietly on his own. Mm-hmm. And uh, yes, the other guys had superstitious things that they would do. It's like a cigarette. I think the, the, one of the guys had a cigarette and would light would write something on the cigarette and then smoke it when they got back. Yeah. Yeah. Like the... Uh... And he would... I think he said you would do... Because you you would do the same things you did every time when you came back. You would repeat. Right. Yeah. Totally. I can totally see that. Like, <laughs> even me... <laughs> totally repeat the same Even things. me. Yeah. Like, it's weird, but... I always touch the... I always touch the outside of the plane whenever I get on the plane. Okay. Um, I imagine that nobody finds this weird. Um, but, uh, yeah, like yeah. I fly a fair bit and every time I've flown, I like touch the side of the plane before I get on like a little, yeah. like a little, well, thank you plane sort of an ideal. And I'm not, I'm not superstitious yeah, or yeah. anything, but mm, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't like pray or clap when we land. I'm always like, although I, I was in one, <laughs> I was in one plane where rough landing very rough landing oh. and everybody like breathed sigh of relief and started clapping when we landed and stuff like he came in we were landing and uh, there was such bad wind that we came in sideways and he touched the the tire down and then brought the plane frontwards to land or whatever and yeah we were everybody was like shaking in their boots but oh. uh yeah and on that same flight we dropped like and i thought we dropped like 10 feet or something like it felt like we went Whew. and All of a sudden, they, they told us later we dropped like 100 feet in this like air pocket of yeah, something or another and, I've heard yeah. about, and I this have, is like a big plane too yeah. this is yeah man i've told i have heard about those those air pockets mm-hmm. i'm not sure with, with the pressures and everything like that there's a certain altitude where you are susceptible to like little that is that is crazy so yeah. so he i mean yeah man i did he so yeah even even like you're saying mm-hmm. uh they were being shot at like even yeah. he was being shot at. Yeah, he yeah. never, he was never like 
just unscathed, just going to and fro, yeah. dropping bombs. Oh, and totally. And like, so the searchlights, if the searchlights got you, now I'd need to brush up on the stories because I've heard this every time I'd sit with him, we'd get, it would, would kind yep. of sit down and yep. get, get a retelling of the stories. But like, yeah, I mean, those, those anti-aircraft, he was shot. He got, they were hit. Some flack, you know, you, and you, you, where it comes up into the cockpit and you don't know, you don't know how bad it is. Right. You know, is everybody fine back there? Is everybody okay? You know, that is really lucky. This is amazing. F- 39 missions and still made it to a hundred. <laughs> but like you said, <laughs> yeah. like you said, he was like, no, I think, I think 39. That's, yeah. uh, that's my number. Thanks. Yeah, I'm totally. Done. And I can't remember what he said, but it was, it was witty and smart. Um, 39 seems like a pretty good number to me. Wow. Yeah. And then came back, had five kids and, uh, ra- raised a farm, you know, worked on a farm and, uh, you know, did he love it? Do you love being a farmer? I think he... Uh, nowadays, 2019, Yeah. if you're a farmer, you're wealthy. Right. Like, you're doing well. This, yeah. is, this is the perception of farmers. Back then, I think it was really tough. Yeah. Like, he... I think he worked... Just super, never stopped super working. Super hard. Did he have, like, cows and stuff? Or was he, he more like... Yeah. He had, he had... It, it was one of those farms where he had everything, but... Uh, um, at one stage, they had they raised pigs, they did cows, they whatever. Hmm. Um, but it did become just a just a grain farm. Yeah, and and so yeah. your mom, yeah, grew up in Saskatchewan. Yes, and then moved to South Africa. That's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Off now, she went. Did your did your grandpa like love the idea that she moved away to South? Why did no. she go to South Africa? She went to she went to teach. She went to make the world a better place. She was on. A, she went to. She went there originally as a Baha'i, which is a, remind me. It's a religion, mm-hmm. and uh, they follow the teachings of a man called Baha'u'llah. Yeah. So, um, I don't prescribe to any formal religion or anything like that. But at one stage, that was my mother's path, hmm. and she moved to South Africa and she, to, in order to teach. And is, is uh, Baha'i a form of Christianity of some sort? No, it, it's its own religion, mm-hmm. and so each religion you 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 could you could fundamentally say that each religion kind of has some primary teachings. Uh, Christianity is like love thy neighbor; mm-hmm. it's like the main one. Um, the the primary teaching in in the Baha'i faith is uh, equality between black and white and men and women. It's like the main teaching. I mean, nothing wrong with that, really. No, no. It's a, we, it, we it, need we need more and more of that right now. Yeah, it, it, no. It's a it's, as far as religions go. I think it's a great religion. Mm-hmm. I really do. Um, anyway, she yeah, and then she did leave the religion. She stopped being Baha'i, um, but yeah, she stayed in South Africa. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, Grandpappy, I, they never really. I don't think they ever really understood why she didn't come back hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. but i think she was frustrated with the small town life small town rural canadian life right um she was just fed up with that lifestyle and she moved to not being able to see anything or being able to see <laughs> the next city from as far as the eye can see yeah totally saskatchewan's pretty flat am i right yeah yeah absolutely i've never been it is totally flat i've always wanted to drive i've driven to the east coast mm-hmm. i've always wanted to drive across the country yeah once maybe on a motorcycle i don't know but yeah. i've always wanted to drive you should do it yeah and the thing is that it really is there's really not much between um the the rockies once you get to the far side of the rockies and then you do finally break into saskatchewan mm-hmm. all the way across manitoba i know i don't know man it's just farmlands. Yeah. It's the it's the biggest... Uh, it seems to me to be like the biggest farming area. I don't know. It's so big. And there are so many farms. Now, your family's farm, does it still exist? Yeah, he sold it. My grandfather did sell the farm because nobody wanted to farm. Mm-hmm. No, and so what's happening in Saskatchewan, which is not happening in Ontario. In Ontario, there's still... There's not many abandoned farms. A small farm can still do really well. But in Saskatchewan, what happens is farms became corporations. Mm-hmm. So they, then the machines got bigger. So they would buy up the small farms and then one guy or like a small team of people could farm the equivalent of like many, like huge amounts of land they could right. farm. 
So there's a lot of abandoned farmhouses in Saskatchewan, like lots. You drive and you just abandon house, abandoned house, abandoned grain silos. Just there's just like because it's these huge corporate, mm-hmm. you know. So my grandfather kept the homestead, which is like that little area of land that has all the buildings. Right. <clears throat> he leased that for ten years, so that he could keep that because I don't think he could sell that. He built the house. Mm. That you know what I mean. Wow. And that's what guy. That's what people could do back in the day. Totally, just could, build a house. Just build a house. Imagine, imagine if you wanted to just build a house. You just had a piece of land, and you were like, "I'm gonna try to build a house." No, I couldn't. We don't. I can't do it. We don't have. <laughs> I mean, somebody has this capability these days, but they're like contractors. Nobody knows what to do anymore. Maybe Mennonites. Mm. Can I borrow that? Yeah. When, no, when I say borrow. I mean, give it to my face. Yeah. No, like totally there is uh let me tell you. Who I could, wish I could build my own house. Let me I, tell you who could build a house. Your wife's dad could build a house. Yeah. He could totally build a house. Totally. That guy he, knows what he's doing. He's old school. And he built houses. He did that. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. I know is <laughs> we might have even in the years that we've been podcasting. I may have mentioned the time that you and I were working at your house on some movie thing and your uh, your dishwasher arrived. Yeah. And your father-in-law was like, get out of the way so I can put this dishwasher in, you idiot. It was amazing. Yeah. He was like, just go downstairs and play with the, your movies and I will, I'm going to hook this so up for true. you. And it's you're so like, true. yeah. Thanks, Dad. Yeah. I mean, it's it's 100% true. I mean, I, I we belong, like how far we've come. And this is something that we've been talking about a little bit at the moment is like these guys who laid down their lives in World War II, if they were, what do they think of the world right now? Yeah. Are they like, yeah, I'm so happy for what we did? Or are they like, ew. I think so. They are? I, I think so. Like, we have a pretty free country. We like, do. Like, you know... You look at you look at a TV show like um, The Man in the High Castle, uh, which is like alternate history where the Germans won, yeah. and uh, and took over America. I mean that didn't happen, so we can kind of do. We're free mm-hmm. uh, to be idiots, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he appreciates that <laughs> exactly, or if he's like, fucking internet. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, you hope so. You hope that the people that sacrifice themselves to keep us podcasting and saying what we want, because that's that's ultimately what it comes down to, is if some other regime or some other government took over mm-hmm. um, that is not a democracy, you're not allowed to say the thing you want to say. Mm-hmm. You're not allowed to think the thoughts you want to think. Totally. You just have to be in line. And if you are not in line, then you get cracked down. You know... I don't want to stray too far from the stories, but it, bring, it brings up an interesting... I was actually just listening to another podcast recently where they were talking about North Korea today. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, they were saying that there was a, a really good book, and I, the author eludes me, but the name of the book was Dear Reader. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, hey, Google. Who wrote the book Dear Reader? Mary O'Connell wrote Dear Reader, a novel. Very good. Thanks, Google. Um but the idea of, of this, it just talks about North Korea and South mm-hmm. Korea and the history of that area. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the things that they were saying is even today, they are part of their day is to be questioned by authority. So, and I don't know if this is true, but this is just what, what mm-hmm. they were talking about in the podcast. So imagine, imagine you go to work every day and part of your day is pulled into an office and questioned by authority and asked what other people are doing wrong. Mm-hmm. So the big brother thing. Yeah, it's like to be, to be a spy. They talked about uh, their they talked about North Korea as a culture of rats. Mm-hmm. Like uh, not rats but like yeah. you're ratting your friend you're ratting out. Your buddy so out. you're required to say and what it, what negative things did Adrian get up to today when mm-hmm. you were working with him? And like you have to talk about your peer group mm-hmm. and be like, yeah, he he didn't seem as enthusiastic about that um, that announcement that you made, mm-hmm. right? And then they go talk to that guy and whatever. So it's like this, yeah, that's shit. That's uh, it's terrible. And even that's today, right? So yeah. I mean, who knows? But um, yeah. And so, is it safe to say that uh, your grandma passed oh some time ago? 
No. 97. She's 97 right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I imagine your grandma and grandma to be hard drinkers and smokers. <laughs> Funny you should say that, but the fact that we're having a cigar and a scotch celebrating him is kind of... Anti. Uh, Anti. It's not, he's like, no, no, he's no, no, not, no. This is incorrect. <laughs> and I think part of the reason that it is... <clears throat> so, no drinking, no smoking. Right. Physical life with working, I mean, on the farm. Mm -hmm. And I think like, he used to eat radishes in the morning. Like, mm. it's one of the things he would eat in the morning. He used yeah. to love eating raw radishes. And I, th I love raw radishes. Yeah. And I think, and I don't know that it's raw radishes that kept him alive, but it's probably a, di a bit of a dietary thing where you're eating, because he used to grow all of his own potatoes also. Mm -hmm. So it's probably some really good health stuff when a lot of your own food is coming out of the garden, the, that you're growing it, mm -hmm. right? Right out in the garden back And there. did he stay pretty active? As long as he could. And yeah. actually, I think the downhill happened when he was like, oh, I can't going like probably a year and a half ago he was out sowing potatoes at the farmstead mm -hmm, at the homestead mm -hmm. right so as soon as that became too much for him i think he was like i think i'm gonna check out yeah i I, I remember i remember ann's dad before he passed he would like i mean and he got really frail because he had crohn's disease mm -hmm. and so he kind of withered to yeah withered um but he would always be outside like getting big stones out of his creek and like, you know, fixing mm -hmm. his chicken coop and like building little things. And he'd do this thing where he'd like get giant pieces of rubber mat and like cut circles of rubber mat and then go out and nail them to his fence post so that his fence post didn't like become all rotten and stuff. You know, he'd kind of cut them at an angle and put these rubber mats on top to protect his fence posts and just weird <laughs> shit like that. And you're like, what are you doing? And you know, he'd be like, yeah, I got to go out and build these rubber mats for my thousand fence posts or whatever. And yeah. out he would go. Did and he live on a farm? No, but he or had like a plot of land. Yeah. He had a big plot of land. Yeah. He kind of had his own house and he built his own like sheds and stuff. Cool. And, and, uh, same, I mean, not, not a farmer, but I think he did live on a farm at one mm -hmm, point. Mm -hmm. Um, but same sort of idea, like kept active with, had a huge garden, like yeah. massive, massive garden. I think, and, I do think that people that grow up on farms, mm -hmm. there is something in them. Of that, that they that is just intrinsic in their birth in the in their birthright. They just, I don't know. They are probably very active, mm -hmm. and they love farms. Oh, maybe I'm. Well, I don't know about yeah, that. I don't know about that. But but I will tell you, like Aunt, growing up, Anne was like, "We got to go out, dig this ditch, pick all the rocks, stones out, and move the stones from one place to another place." Like even her, her growing up was like hard work, work digging. Yeah moving a lot of work you know and so and and my wife is like a super hard worker so i mean yeah. you know doesn't really whine about the things that we all whine about yeah you know? i didn't do any hard work as a kid i like learned how to count money at a fair selling pizza to people yeah you know um yeah. so i got good with maths yeah i was born in the big city mm -hmm. i was born right in the middle of the big city and i just played with my friends that's what I did. As you do. Yeah. Yeah. That was my life. Yeah. So, um, and and how often did you go back to Saskatchewan to like... Yeah, I would see him once every three years, I'd say. Roughly. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, you're heading out there? Yep. Going to see the whole family? The whole family. My brother's coming from South Africa. He's in the air right now. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, that'll be good. Yeah. It's good to see family again. Yeah. And Not under is, these circumstances, but... Well, the thing is that there's there's not often a time when everybody's going to be together. So, as much as as much as this is a sad, you know, for a sad reason, it's a very valuable situation yeah. or occasion. Yeah. Because everyone will be together. Yeah. That is pretty great. And, um, yeah, you, you never know when it's going to happen again. That is unfortunate. Yeah. It, well, it's like that with families that are spread out over a, long, a large area. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As the, as the mother and father or the grand, or the, the center pins of the family pass away, the family doesn't really... Because that's, that's, that's where everybody goes towards those people and, and to visit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then they see each other as a byproduct of visiting those center pins. Right. 
So and you it's almost an excuse. Yeah. To get together, yeah. 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 So you just you never know when there's going to be a big gathering again. And uh you, you get to hug the people that you haven't seen in a really long time. Mhm. I mean, mm-hmm. I have some some cousins who, you know, I grew up with. I yeah. saw them a lot when I was growing up and I haven't seen them in years. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to hu- and I and I'm I, I know they have facial hair, so I'm definitely going to hug them and rub their facial hair. Amazing. Yeah. The the ladies. Yeah. Yeah. That's your female cousins. Totally. Yeah, I I mean I my family fell apart. So um you know, was I this, I was don't this think due to yeah, it was due to lots of things. Lots of things. It wasn't just a single thing. No, I mean, I would say really it was a single thing. It was it was yeah. definitely the the whole kerfuffle with the the golf course that we yeah. built for sure. So, okay. like when my grandfather died, I did not go to his funeral because fuck that guy. Um, but mm. uh, but even before that, we kind of fell apart. Like I think I heard the other day that my grandma my so my my real grandma i when she passed i did go down to visit her or visit i mean yeah. go to her funeral and, and whatnot um but uh um but i learned that i i i'm pretty sure it, nothing was definitive so that is weird and i haven't really dug into it um but my grandma who was my grandfather's second wife i heard that she recently passed or a bunch of years ago and I never even knew because we mm-hmm. had our families moved on. Yeah, and in different um, ways. and I think <clears throat> I think that um, I have a bunch of aunts who I would certainly visit and say hello to and whatnot. But just due to some religious stuff and some you know other mm-hmm. problems and things like that, we've kind of split split apart. And uh, I mean, I wouldn't have a problem visiting them, but I would just wouldn't go back home to make a point of it really yeah you know, you would, i'm kind you of my, make a trip to see them no my yeah. my ties are kind of done with that mm-hmm. with that side of my life um you know my dad's up here mm-hmm. uh, my mom is still down close to where i grew up so i mean i still do go down to visit her but mm-hmm. but uh not the rest of my family really mm-hmm. but uh yeah it's it yeah yeah but i will say there's something to be said about a like uh, uh sort of like a, a, the center pin of a family and they stay together. So like a, like my grandfather and my grandmother and how they kind of were still together mm-hmm. at, at a really old age. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, uh, I don't know, it, 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 does, it does bring a bedrock and a foundation totally. of safety to the, to, you know. And the fact that they had five kids. Yeah. And so their kids went off and had families. And so you've probably got an extended family of 20 Mm-hmm. So when you guys when you guys do come back to that center pin, it's a big to do. Yes, right? and this is, well, the thing is that the, those gatherings have been fewer and fewer, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? So this is what I mean by this is going to be a very valuable occasion. Is that we're all going to be there, right? So it is going to be a yeah. big a big shebang, and we should probably take a photo with his with his photo in the in the frame, and everybody else standing there with their face looking at the camera. Yeah. We should yeah. probably do it. So, um, I don't know if we ever talked about this on the podcast before. I'm not, not I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, and we may have, it's, we probably have, but maybe a year ago or maybe, I don't know, maybe two years ago, we thought we were going to try to launch this company. Mm-hmm. Um, forget me not. Mm-hmm. Right. And, um, so the idea of this company, because, because at the time you were doing uh, a lot of corporate video work Mm -hmm. and, um, um, you know, I think this was right around the time that my wife's mom passed and your mom passed. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to remember Derek, Derek also Uh, had. Derek wished he could have that for his father because he he would love for his grandchildren or his children to be able to meet him. Um, but uh yeah so we we all we mm-hmm. thought you know what a what, what an interesting opportunity to um you know videotape and get some really good high quality let's say film quality documentary type mm-hmm. stuff of a person before they passed right yeah. so you would go and you would 
sit at their bedside and hear their stories and, you know, try to do maybe go around their, their home. If they, if they were able to take you around yeah. their home and tell stories about the things or whatever and put yeah. something together for the family and like a professional documentary. Mm-hmm. Like the thing is that it used to be that a professional documentary could only be done by, you know, there was only a select few number right. of people who could make a professional documentary. Whereas now there's so many more people who can make a professional documentary right. and there are so many people who can, you know, and, and you can tell your story before you die. Right. And and to cut it together in a way that is like heartwarming. Yeah. Right? So that so and that tells the story. Yeah. And because you meet the person. Totally. Right? Because when, when we did um we did a like a like a photo collage mm-hmm. to music and stuff like that. And I think that's pretty standard too. Mm-hmm. Um we did that for Anne's dad. Mm-hmm. Um but uh but yeah, to have something where that you can see them laughing, telling a story. I mean, that will just, right? Totally. And so that was a cool idea, but it didn't really go because a couple of reasons, I think. I think, um, number one, it's hard to, it was hard for us even to be like, we want to be the people that try to make a buck off of somebody who's just about to die right yeah. this 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 was a terrible feeling now it, it, when you when you talk about this idea people are like oh my god yes i wish i had this for my loved one before they passed mm-hmm. but again we we kind of launched it we, we well st- I, I, and and i will say this yeah um so people people responded well to the idea right um they thought it was amazing Especially people who have lost someone are like, just imagine yeah. if we had. A... But what we found, because the thing is that on Heather's side of the family, when somebody gets sick, and there have been a bunch of people, like there's been like four people that we know on Heather's, just in Tavistock, mm-hmm. who have gotten sick and passed away. And every time someone's like, do you want Adrian to come in and do some filming? Right. And they never do. No, no. So good idea in concept, and I think hearts in the right in place. Theory, yeah. Because you're not supposed to do it on your deathbed, right? You're supposed to do it when you're like, do you know what would be cool? Is a documentary about me, right? So that my kids can meet me, or my my great grandkids can meet me, yeah. Long after I'm gone, right? You're not supposed to do it on your deathbed, but that's when people think about it, right? That's the only. Otherwise, they're like, I don't no, even I'm think they sp- think about it then. I think they think about it. After months after, years yeah, after. Yeah, they're like, yeah. oh, wouldn't it be nice to have some video footage of them laughing? Yeah. yeah. Like, I found I found some old um, tapes and things, like even cassette tapes, mm-hmm. um, because it's cool. Like, and I, I want to even say that my dad maybe has even done this, but like, we had cassette tapes of uh, almost like, you know, a 1960s podcast. It was amazing. Amazing. <laughs> and uh, so I actually took those cassette tapes and I digitized them, mm-hmm. right? I threw them in the Google Cloud. Now Anne has them forever. If she wants to, she can go. And uh, like her dad would record some of his favorite songs, you know, onto cassette tape. So like you've kind of got him being like, yeah, but like this song, blah, 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 and mm-hmm. plays a song or whatever. So like I've got those, right? Yeah. And all the photos and stuff. But yeah, not, not that it was a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Just... Some good ideas just aren't good ideas, mm-hmm. right? And, Theory and practice are and different. I, and yeah. I think that, you know, again, it's like, do you want to be the, the merchant, merchant of death, so yeah. to speak? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, that is exactly right. And the answer is not really. No. You know? And do you know what? And the thing is, like, even even they were wanted, and even I said this to m- now, yeah. if somebody is passing away and they're like, do you want agent to come and film? It's not for money. No. Like, it's just like, do you want Adrian to come and, like, do something? Grab some footage before they're gone. Because I'll tell you, I have footage of my mom when she was sick. And it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, because my kids are never going to see her. Right. They'll see photos of her, but now they can hear her talk. Right. And it is a big deal. Like, I have some stuff where she laughed. Oh, my God. Yeah, dude. She just laughs at a joke, at something funny. I hope it was a dick and fart joke. It. And um, I hope she made you squirm. You're like, oh, mom, Jesus. No, no, no. Damn it. Uh, but, um, but the thing is that the value of that is huge. It's, uh, it's a lot. So I'll tell you, uh, my wife was like, you guys drink all the time on your podcast. Would you like some whiskey cake? 
And so she bought this for us for our podcast. I was like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what whiskey cake tastes like, we but want whiskey cake. Here you go. This is amazing. This might be brutal for the record. Don't tell her. I don't even. Yep. There you go. Oh, thanks. You're just handing me a big bowl of whiskey cake? Yep. How do we do this? I don't know. I assume it's like a muffin. I assume it's like a cake. All right. It is like a muffin. Oh, man. Get in there. Tuck in. Let me try this. Mm. It's like fruit cake. It's like Christmas cake. It's like Christmas cake. That is exactly what this cake tastes like. I'm going to eat it. Oh, my God. I'm going to eat it all. That's good. I'd love to hear, does your grandma have crazy war stories? Not the same. Mm-hmm. She wasn't flying off. I, you know what? No, not the same. But you know what? She was always, and this is an interesting space, but she was always overshadowed by my grandfather. But she also took that role. Like mm-hmm. she would always like. Let your grandpa tell the stories. And totally. And like, like deflect. She wouldn't like get into her own stories. She's part of that generation of people that don't really talk about their feelings. And you totally see that with her. Like, I once I once asked her because she grew up in Yorkshire, and I was like, and I think she was in a town or in a city, mm-hmm. and I was like, wasn't it difficult to move out? Because all of a sudden she goes from being in a city in the UK, right, to rural Saskatchewan, where there's where there's that there's the only toilet is a hole in the ground, and you're in a one room and had, not for nothing. More snow. Totally. And the cold in the winters. Like, didn't you be like, like, didn't you, wasn't it really hot? Didn't you? Like, And she was just like, oh, you know. Oh, you know. You know? Yeah, I know. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Like, no juice. No, like, just like. Well, now that, now that she's can take the limelight. You can find out about that time that she killed three Germans with a shovel <laughs> when she was resupplying a plane. Totally. I mean, she should just make stuff up. <laughs> I mean, she probably she wouldn't. No. She wouldn't sully the honor of her comrades. <laughs> no, she's a, no, and I don't. I don't think she's. She just mm-hmm. probably. I don't know. She really didn't tell too many stories. Mm-hmm. I, and I did ask her. I'm an inquisitive individual. Mm-hmm. And I did ask her for stories of the war. Did you ever kill any Germans, Grandma? Oh, you know. <laughs> That's what No, you know. I don't. What do yeah. you mean? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> oh, you know. Uh, but I will say my grandfather, they were playing field hockey. And she was like bashing all the other girls out of the way. She was like the roughest and strongest. And he was just like, yes, she will make a good farmer. <laughs> so then he beat her over the head with, an, with a wrench and he dragged her. He put her on the back of his plane and he flew back to Canada before she knew what was going on. And then she was like, oh, well. <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> her favorite joke is to drink her rosé, her glass of rosé. Mm-hmm. And then she says, she holds it up. She says, there's a hole in my glass. Your grandma's a wino. Yeah, totally. I thought you said she didn't drink. She <laughs> no, probably she, smokes like a sailor. <coughs> she, she's, she would have a couple, but she she slowly started drinking more as she got older. Even granddad would have a couple of uh, sips of something. Is that right? Yeah, mm. but he never really, never really took to it. Hmm. Well, I will say, look, this is probably uh, a slightly more morose version of our show, but mm. um, you know. I think that uh I don't know. I want to hear stories about uh about people mm-hmm. and uh unfortunately, you know, you lose people. And um you know, I think it's good to good to try to remember. It is. It is really it's remembering is the big thing. I don't know, but it also it also makes you feel like what's the point? Hmm. Well, we're all just going to die. Yeah. That's true. 
So what, what is the point? What is the thing that you should try and do? If we're all just going to die and end up in the same place, I think, what should you try and do? Try to do good things for your kids. Mm-hmm. Try to do good things for yourself. Yeah. Try to do, do good things for other people. Yeah. I think, I mean, your granddad fucking saved the life of like 10 people every time he flew. <laughs> like, you, you think about how many people ended up back wherever they ended up mm-hmm. and Spread had, seeds, had yeah. kids and had grandkids uh, and they all owe you 50 bucks. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. But hunt them down. Um, on the flip side of that coin in any war situation is how many lives did you end? And it, it did bug him. It really upset him. This is this is a good point. It really he was he he went through he went through some really he would get really upset, you know, emotionally upset about the bombs he had dropped. I suppose because you, I suppose because you don't always know where you're dropping them. Like I you, suppose these days, like sometimes you get to watch it on video. Yeah, like when you drop when you do a drone strike. Yeah, and I mean you might know that you hit, you might know that you had some collateral damage. But at least you know what building you're shooting at. Yeah. Maybe they, I suppose, when you're dropping bombs out of a plane in the dark. Well, you you have a target, and it might be a factory. Mm-hmm. But they also bombed cities. I mean, they bombed German cities. The Germans bombed London cities or UK cities. I mean, it was such a such a terrible war tactic. Mm-hmm. It doesn't get you anything. Right. It's just like make it's, your enemy pissed off. Yeah, it's just it's morale stuff, right? It's terrorism why, almost. Yeah, why bomb the cities? Like it's pointless to bomb the cities. You gotta if you you gotta bomb the airfields. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I suppose there's a couple suppose, of is it. It's funny, but there's a couple of key things that hit a couple of key mistakes that Hitler made. That if he didn't make those mistakes, he would have potentially won the war. If he didn't bomb this, if he didn't bomb the cities, right, and he had focused on military strategic military points instead, it would have been a, he, a different that, story. That would have been a different story. But also, if he didn't go into Russia, because he stretched his, himself too far, because he decided to go in all directions at once, super fast, and he stretched himself in Russia. His supply lines got cut off, and it, it, you know mm-hmm. they ended up shooting themselves in the foot. If they had left Russia, they'd be like, "We'll come and get you later," kind of thing. They would have totally, totally dominated Europe. So, a book that I'm reading right now, and I'm trying to, uh, one of my goals in life, at in this time, life? in life at this time, mm-hmm. is to get back to. I used to read a, just a, just a boatload. Mm-hmm. Like I would used to read probably three books a week, and like, Holy shit. and the thing is, is that. That sounds ridiculous, but I'm sure that there's people listening being like, yeah, that's totally legit. Because the thing is, is that's Not just what me. I did. Yeah. Right? Like, there was no, like, yeah, they had internet, but like, while you're waiting for a picture of a naked lady to like load, you know? <laughs> you were reading a book. You're reading a book, right? Um, so bad. yeah, I used to read all the time, all the time. And I've kind of really gotten away from it. And I feel like it's kind of a negative Mm-hmm. You know, there's so much good stuff out there. Like I, I watch a lot more TV and movies these days mm-hmm. and just kind of like veg out. Um, now I do still listen to audiobooks like mm-hmm. a lot, um, but I do it while I'm jogging or while I'm driving or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but goal in life, try to read, get back to reading one book a month. Love it. And um, so the book I'm reading right now is uh, kind of about World War II, but it's very specific. Yeah. Um, it's a book called Ordinary Men. And it is... Very heavy. Mm-hmm. So, uh, did I tell you about this already? Mm-mm. Okay. It's um, it's pretty fucked up. It's a book about um, this police battalion. It's called Police Battalion 101. Mm-hmm. And um, the idea behind the book is that, um, you know, the Third Reich decided that they were going to extinguish all the Jews in Europe. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and they couldn't just do it with all their like they could do it, but they couldn't just do it with their army, and they couldn't necessarily do it with um, their SS officers and all this kind of stuff. So they would actually like enlist police units. Mm-hmm. So imagine like 
the Waterloo Regional Police. They're, they, you know, the the RCMP comes in. They're like the RCMP officer is like, okay, I'm, I need the Waterloo Regional Police um, third unit or whatever. What I need you to do is go and get all of these people and just bring them to the town square, right? And then when they get them to the town square, um, the SS officers would be there and they would shoot all the Jews or whatever. I'm mixing Waterloo and Germany at this time, but or whatever. Um, and so it's the, it's the story about these dudes, right, who are just cops. And they're forced to Dude, go and yeah. get the Jews and round them up and whatever. And at first, they're just rounding them up. And then they're guarding the trains. And then they are um, bringing, you know, there'll be one guy with a gun in a forest. And they have to bring people one at a time. And then the person so will they shoot know, They know what's happening. They know what's going on. Yeah. And then it's like, okay... Now we need you to, um, if you're if you're going into this town, and there's anybody over the age of sixty or baby, just shoot them and then bring the other people. Like, don't struggle with the old people. Just shoot them there and then bring the other people. Right. So it's like an escalating amount of craziness yeah. and violence. They, slow, they slowly suck you in. And then and then they would do things oh, like man. you'd have a group of like forty policemen, and they would go, okay, um, you know what we got to do today, guys. This is gonna be hard. Right, we all don't want to do this, you know. But this is these are our orders. So, like, listen, if any of you don't want to do this, just raise your hand, and you can you can go. We'll put you on other duty. And and the, the so it's it's the accounts of these men, and they're like, and did they actually put them on other duty? Or yeah, did they, they did. They them? would. They totally would. They'd be like, "Yep, oh, you don't want to? Sure, no problem. You can go and do this thing." But but and some of them did. Some of them were like, "I don't want to have any part of this." Right, but the accounts of the men were like we look around at each other and if your buddies are going to do this hard thing then you're not going to puss out and not do it you're going to be a man with your your bros your police battalion you're going to go yeah, off and do this terrible thing with your bros kind of right and they're Back. like you know and and so anyways it's the man this book is it's tough because Maybe. you just hear the sheer numbers and like Oof. you know I don't know. It's, you know, every once in a while, this thing kind of pops in somewhere, like Holocaust deniers, mm -hmm. kind of pops out. And you're like, yeah, but, I mean, they kept really good records. They were like, and we, you know, we brought out 47 Jews, and we killed, you know, we, we killed three old ladies, and we brought the 47 Jews. Yeah, it's ridiculous. They, they kept, like, meticulous records. It's ridiculous. So... You know, and there were people. There were, I mean, there aren't many Holocaust survivors that, that aren't that weren't children, mm -hmm. like adults that were, you know, mm -hmm. not left. But twenty years ago, there were. Right. There were people like, yeah, I was in Auschwitz. Right. You know. Yeah, you just want to take any Holocaust denier and smack him. Yeah, I mean, if somebody's like, if somebody's just like, this is what I went through. And like, did you what know that, is, What is the point of denying? Did you know it that in this? Germany it's illegal to be a Holocaust denier? Yeah, it's also illegal. Like. So I just heard this on the radio, but it's actually illegal to mention anything that has to do with the Nazis. It's illegal. Anything anti-Semitic is illegal in Germany. So Twitter actually does not allow any tweets that are anti-Semitic or have anything to do with Nazis allowed to are illegal in Germany. So the point that this that this person was making was that Twitter is 100% monitoring everything that that right. goes through its platform. Right. And which means that they're allowing it in the rest Everywhere of the world. Else. Free speech, bro. If you want to be free to say what you want to say, other people are free the, to say whatever. You totally but, gotta but, let and, everybody and, say and you know, anything. You know what's interesting is like I suppose we're getting into a weird space here, but I suppose people can be totally free to say whatever they want, and we can be free to be like, you're a fucking asshole. Yeah. We don't want to have anything to do with you. Guy that is saying yeah. whatever it is that you're and, saying. And, and you know what? I just, the only thing I, I think is important with free speech is you have to have defined, very strictly defined laws in place so that people are able to say what they want because you, I feel like you need that for a free society. Yeah. You need people to be able to say what they want, but then the laws need to be in place that they cannot, cannot step across a certain line. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, they cannot, like, as soon as somebody breaks an actual law that protects somebody's, that protects someone, 
you know, a person, an individual, mm -hmm. then in any way, then they need to be held accountable hardcore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, you, you don't, you, you just want, you want people to say what they want to say, but if they cross a certain line that everybody agrees on, then now you are in trouble with the law. Getting people to agree is tough. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because you do. You love free speech. You love free speech until someone says something you think is dumb. <laughs> yeah. Totally. But then you know what? <laughs> like, but, what but, an idiot. You but this is my mouth. point. They don't have to go to jail for that. You can just Not for being dumb. No. You can just stop doing business with them. Mm -hmm. You know, vote with your dollars or vote with yeah. your, you know, whatever. Yeah. You can unfollow them. Don't totally. listen to them. Yeah. I and did. in fact, that is the... That is the greatest, the greatest retraction of power you can have is to stop paying attention to them. Yeah, it's a tough one. Um, since we're having morose podcast today, did you did you see the news about the uh, Christchurch shooter, mass shooter? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't see the news about who it was. Was it was it a young? It was a twenty nine year old Aussie dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And, and they're going to they, they are going to put that super internet shit poster too. He was a fucking asshole. Oh, uh, he was. Like hey. like so so he, and, he, and that's going to be in the headlines a lot is that the fact that he was Australian. <laughs> they're really going to really going to I mean he uh live streamed to like YouTube oh, and Facebook like, the thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It took the, I don't even know if oh, they've taken no. it all down, but they, yeah. He, so he live streamed it. Before he started <gasps> shooting, he said don't forget to subscribe to PewDiePie. Like he was like a fucking loony. Holy shit. Don't yeah. forget to subscribe to PewDiePie. Did what did PewDiePie say? Nothing. I, don't know. I, I mean, I assume he's. Oh my God. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. I assume he's. That guy did not like, tell this guy. No, to do no, no, this. no. Of course not. But like, the, but he <laughs> put a manifesto and he, I, he was trying to spark. He was trying to spark a thing. He was, he was trying to get, it was like, Totally. It just it just blew my mind that it happened in New Zealand. Like it it felt like New Zealand is so far away from any kind of situation, yeah. racial strife situation. You just like, I mean it was interesting to hear their their I guess prime minister. I'm not not sure the lady, um, but she was you know they put out a post about you know 270 cultures and like I guess New Zealand is really like a, a multicultural society. Totally. I would, I, and I and I know a lot of South Africans have moved to New Zealand from mm. South Africa. Yeah, my but family, like, like I have, I have a cousin that lives there, and and it was messed up because I I reached out and she said that her, I guess, well, she said her and her family are totally fine, but my mom was saying that her husband normally like works right around Christchurch mm -hmm. or in Christchurch and didn't go to work that day. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, yeah, I actually have some friends in Christchurch. I should, I mean, they're not Muslim. So I didn't assume that they were in a mosque, but like I should probably send them a message. I did find out that, love you, mom. My mom didn't know that Christchurch was, was a town. She was like, it happened in the Christchurch. And I was like, <laughs> I think I think Christchurch is a big city. Yeah. And uh, anyways. It's yeah. the big city. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's terrible. I mean, just, Auckland is uh, bigger, I think, right? Uh, is it? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think, Christ but Christchurch is the capital, right? Is it? I thought it was Auckland. Okay, Google. What is the capital of New Zealand? Wellington is the capital of New Zealand. <laughs> Boom. Owned. Doesn't Owned matter if we're Googs. doesn't matter what we're talking about. <laughs> we can still laugh about the yeah. fact that we don't know anything. But um, I will say that it, it's just, like I don't know, man. Like the problem is, I feel like all the crazy people, or like. They're not, they're not crazy enough to get put away, mm -hmm. but they are crazy enough to be fucking crazy. Are doing, are all deciding to do the same thing because we're all connected and talking to each other. Right. It's so like the thing that they're like, they're all gravitating towards is this like violence, this violence, mass in violence. This, in this mass violence in a very specific way. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Like they kind of like, I want to do that thing. Right. Mm hmm. So it's, I mean, they're going to throw the book at this guy. I mean, they should just, they should just, I don't know if they had the death penalty in New Zealand. Well, they should just chop off his arms and his legs and leave him in the sun. We're not going to kill you. No, let the gulls pick out his eyes. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's a real piece of shit. For well, sure. It, I mean. I mean. Uh, yeah. You kill a bunch of innocent people. You deserve to get fucking. Come on now. I'll take that scotch. Oh, give me the scotch. Anyway. So, so obviously, okay. obviously. Yeah. Can I jump to a happier topic? Totally. Take us, bring, drag us out of this hole. I want to start. Death. I, I'm not going to. But uh, I did think about um, that it would be fun to either start another podcast or add a segment to our podcast. But it's not film related. But something that, something that interests me so much is uh, the rise of uh, artificial intelligence. Mm-hmm. And just, just everything that is going on mm-hmm. in this area. Mm-hmm. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun to either, I mean, I'm sure there's other podcasts out there that are completely dedicated to like the news of AI or whatever, but I thought it would be fun to just, you know, every now and again, bring something up that's particularly interesting. We should just do that. Just have an AI podcast. Every now and again, we just talk about I don't know. It's so, it's so, so fascinating. Like I I was listening to somebody talk the other day and they were talking about how um, um, we've only had photographs for like the last hundred and some odd years or whatever Mm -hmm. right and we went from you know having zero photographs to having iphones and taking you know all these crazy cameras making photographs out of nothing right and i'm like yeah that's cool but in the last 30 years we've went from having almost like the the shittiest connectivity to our neighbors Mm -hmm. possible right like when you were a kid, do you remember your earliest experiences with a telephone? Oh, yeah. We had we lived in the country, and we had a party line. Do you know what this is? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so, like... The phone would ring, and depending on what it, what, how many rang, rings... It was either you, or it was either for you or for your neighbor. Yeah. Like, we have phones where... You know, the rotary phones, and this this seems silly because, I mean, everybody, everybody kind of knows what a rotary phone is. However, when I show my kids a rotary phone, the first thing they do is, like, press the numbers. They're like, you know, and it's, it's it, the, the yeah, turning of the dial is, not, is yeah. not intuitive, right? Um, but the party line was like, you wanted to make a phone call, you picked up. And your neighbor might be having a conversation with somebody else. You'd be like, oh, sorry, I'll try again. How, how long are you going to be on the, the phone? Oh, I'm going to be 15 minutes. Okay, I'll, I'll try it again later. You'd hang up. And then you would wait 20 minutes, and then you'd pick up the phone. Okay, dial tone. Then you'd make your call, right? But uh, so that's where I grew up was that, mm-hmm. right? So we've went from zero internet, like no internet whatsoever in 30-ish years. And I mean, I, you could argue that, you know, the U.S. Army or whatever had the internet before. We really kind of got it. But mm-hmm. in the last 30 years, we've went from having zero internet to a giant computer in your phone we can ask google anything we want Mm -hmm. we have driverless cars we have wi-fi everywhere Mm -hmm. we can make like a you know facetime or google hangout phone call to china like in a second and be face to face with so i I spoke to someone in south africa today and i spoke to someone in on wi-fi right and i spoke to someone in uk today on wi-fi right so in the last 30 years, we've made this jump. No one would even could even pa- fathom AI except mm-hmm. for in sci-fi movies. And now there's not a single chess player in the world that can beat a computer at chess, right? And so the discussion that I was it's listening to not, was it's like, just not possible. what happens when, you know, you know, right now they're making what they call dumb AI, mm-hmm. right? Which is AI that understands the rules of a particular thing and can do that thing Mm -hmm. really well, better than anyone else. And what happens if that's as far as we ever go? As far as we ever go is just a computer or a robot will be better than any human at any task Mm -hmm. that needs to be performed, right? Then what do we do? Then they're talking about artificial general intelligence, which is the new, the AGI is the new kind of term. And that's Mm -hmm. a robot that can like learn how to play chess, becomes the best in the world. And then you're like, okay, now learn how to play the piano. And then it learns how to play the piano, but never forgets how to play chess. And then, you know, you set them loose on the internet and you're like, fix our economy or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. and all the scariness that goes on with that kind of stuff. So there's so many cool things. 
cool, terrible, scary yeah. things. Yeah, and I think I think the thing that is scary. People say there's a difference between artificial intelligence, which is the ability for your computer to do the tasks it needs to do, mm-hmm. and machine learning is the dangerous thing. No, it? no, machine learning is is is. Or is that the not dangerous thing? Yeah. And artificial intelligence is the dangerous yeah. thing. So there's a there's a lot of like there's a lot of terms that are flying around. Machine learning is a really big term in technology right now. Like a lot of, they actually said that something like uh, the statistic that I heard the other day was that like. 95% of all the companies that are touting AI these days mm-hmm. actually don't have any AI. Yeah. It's all machine learning. It's all machine learning, yeah. But, um, but yeah, they're talking about the, the AGI is the new mm-hmm. thing, which is the general intelligence, which is like it, it's, once a, it, can once learn, a, it can learn. Once a computer can learn the thing, mm-hmm. it, it, does, it, that computer will have the learned stuff stored up and it doesn't totally. another computer wouldn't need to learn that stuff. So so the interesting ah, the interesting ah, podcast it's a that, hive mind. Totally. So the interesting <laughs> podcast that I was listening to That's terrifying. Um, the guy was talking about this conference that he went to and this was so cool. In the conference that he went to, which was like in Puerto Rico or something like that, mm-hmm. and, and I thought this was a really cool title for a movie, so don't take it anyone. Somebody's gonna grab it. But there was something that they called the Charter House Rules. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that is a great title. Mm-hmm. Um, but Charter House Rules is a thing, apparently, and it's a yeah. conference thing. And apparently what it is is you're allowed to talk about what goes on at the conference. You're allowed to talk about things that were said at the conference. But you're not allowed to say who said them, and you're not allowed to say who was there. Just that way, people are free to come and express their ideas with... You know, they can be doomsayers or they can be innovators and, Mm. you know, the rest of the people can't, you know, can't hold them to account, let's say. Um, But anyways, they're saying that um, that a a computer, an artificial intelligence with uh, quantum computing capabilities could do, um, I think it was something like 10,000 years worth of human computations or learning in one week. Hmm. So they were like, so just think about that, right? Think about like if you had, you know, we're like, okay, Adrian, we want you to like learn how to play chess. And then you come back in a week and you've had 10,000 years Mm -hmm. to hang out by yourself. What are you going to... someone who comes back in a week. Right. Well, I'm not... My time is 10,000 years, but the computer... Right, but we're not even talking about... Correct. We're not even talking about chess now. We're talking about like, Whatever. would you have gone crazy? Would you have learned every piece of human knowledge and be able to like, who? what can you do in 10,000 years with the full capabilities of all human knowledge on the internet? Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So anyways, the one thing that they were saying was that they're specifically uh, building networks for these AI mm-hmm. and they're telling the AI one of the rules is you're not allowed to go out and try to access the internet. Mm-hmm. But then they're leaving like fake ports open to like a non-internet to see if it tries to go out to the internet and like oh disobey. Oh my it's, god! You know, they're they're doing all kinds of crazy. This is crazy. So I'm just saying that it's it's such it's such a we're in such a neat like a. I mean, man, the the, this the is... Chinese uh, adverb or or um, I don't know what that word is, but uh, proverb. Like, yeah. may you live in interesting times. It's supposed to be a curse or something like that. Yeah, totally. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. We're we're gonna we're gonna be living in Star Trek soon. I think. Well, our, our acceleration is gonna just explode. If, like, as, if, if we you have, think if in the last an... thirty years, yeah, we went from no internet to what we are today. What will and the if next the graph thirty is exponential? What will the next thirty years? It'll be, like? be insane. Right. It'll be absolutely unfathomable. Because the thing is that if we can harness a thinking power that could that could think us 10,000 years in a week mm-hmm. well one of the comments I was I mean come on one of the comments was that it might grow so fast that it wouldn't even care about us anymore like yeah. we don't care about chickens totally right they're like you're so far beneath me that I couldn't even be arsed to help you in any way whatsoever yeah. you puny beings yeah totally <laughs> Except that we didn't, chickens didn't make us. And, um, and what if the chicken was standing up next to the off switch going, 
<laughs> Can you fix my chicken coop Don't, problem? Uh, fuck with me. Cause I'm really tired I'll of the fox your, getting into it, my hen house. Yeah, totally. You and your pricks. Because then, then the machine is like, sure, no problem. I'll help you. Yeah, I think that the problem is once the once a, once a legit yeah. AI is connected to the internet, which I kind of believe that it is. Yeah, already. Like, I believe that there is artificial general intelligence in the world right now, mm-hmm. and it is... Conscious? I think so. Oh. I think that it exists today. Mm. And I think that there's no way to shut it down. I think it's in yeah. the internet. And well, I one, think it's there. We, we could never shut power. We could never stop power. Right. We could never stop powering the world. So if there is a thing inside of the power internet, it's it's there. It'll never shut down. Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah. I I'm mean, just, this, is, this is artificial right here. This is the storyline oh, behind artificial. Totally. I mean, totally. Come on. We better start working on time travel. Somebody better. Yeah. It might. I mean, the thing is that if science, it, science, there might be a hard stop. Like, I know that we imagine time travel is possible. Yeah. There and might be a hard stop with science. Like, it's totally. like not possible. Yeah, totally. You have to you have to be able to abide by the laws of physics, let's say. Yeah. They, they, they might, it, it might just be like, look, we, we've done all every single calculation. And in fact, it is not possible mm-hmm. to go backwards mm-hmm. in time. To change time travel, so I will say let's let's wrap this one up. But I I will say I saw some. Um, I heard that there is a documentary mm-hmm. about time travelers, and I, I love that. I don't know I love what that it is, it exists. but I've I've heard that there is a really good documentary about some things that are pretty unexplainable through history. Okay, um, I and, love that. And they I kind of that. they kind of intertwine it together, and they make. A weird case. Like, there's people out there that truly believe that time travel totally. exists. Here's the thing. Yeah. I, uh, I want it to exist. <laughs> I think it's amazing. Sure. I just... We just want to live in the craziest world possible. Yeah. Yeah. A world that blows your mind, right? A world yeah. that, you know, you, you, watch, uh, you watch a show like um, Love, Death, Plus Robots on Netflix. Yeah. And you, you watch an episode and you're like, oh my God, this is some crazy shit, right? Or you watch, you know, and I, but anyways, I will say I wanted to hunt that down, um, but I did just see on Netflix, there's a documentary about um, the Flat Earth Society. Yeah. So I'm going to check this out. Now, this documentary that days. you saw, it's, is it on Netflix, this time on Netflix. documentary? No, no, no. I don't know. Okay. I just, the other day I heard that, I heard somebody talking about time travel mm-hmm. and they talked about, well time travel exists and i'm like no way and then they said there's there's evidence out there that about all this craziness and they're like you got to dig into it a little bit and apparently there's a documentary out there that ties a lot of this together i don't know what it is but i'm going to try to hunt it down because i I love it it. i love it um but uh there's some craziness out there people Mm -hmm. and uh i mean this isn't the podcast to get to the bottom of it all we really do want to try to get uh jump back into our filmmaking journey but Took a little aside today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that does interest me a lot. I love that. Okay, well, listen, folks, go out uh, there, go, go out there, and find some documentaries about some really crazy shit. Yeah, some things that that are uh, uh, f- conspiracy laden, and let us know. And uh, before you do that, phone your loved ones and tell them that they have a little conversation. Tell them. Heyo, you look good. Been thinking about you. You look marvelous. You look marvelous, dear. All right. Adios, muchachos. See you guys. Dream big. Work hard. Thanks for watching. First frames first. Yes. First frames first. Thank you, Jason. Welcome. If you enjoyed, head over to our website, www.thefableforest.com. Check out our films and sign up for our newsletter where we will send you exclusive content. Hit us up on our socials, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, always at The Fable Forest. And share our show with your friends. It'll really help us out a lot. Dream big. Work hard.